There are guns flying to China, lashed to the floor of this plane. Field guns, trucks, ammunition, barrels of high-test gas for Chinook fighters. Day after day, nine tons of cargo lifted through the frozen passes of the Himalayas and down across the edge of China. This Chinese soldier is reading a shape in the sky. He's part of the Chinese aircraft warning system, the most famous in the world. He's recognized the plane. He knows its name. The giant in the sky is his personal friend. C-46, Curtis Commando. Let's turn it back. Let's keep it for just a few minutes till it becomes familiar to us, too. Let's have this great plane perform for us. Hold it. Yes, it's a low mid-wing monoplane with two underslung radial engines. Between them is the big rounded fuselage. The center panels of the wing are straight but the outer panels have marked dihedral. Behind the fuselage, we can see the height of the single fin and rudder. Once more, while the C-46 lifts over it, let's hold it. Let's look at its fast curving fuselage and the shape of its wings, upswept from this angle and the width of its tailplane. It's a streamlined freight car on wings. Now, outlined clearly above us, we're able to see the whole design of the plane. First, the fuselage, molded in one smooth curve from pointed nose to pointed tail. Then, the shape of the wing, swept back from the nacelles. Finally, the tailplane, wide, evenly tapered on both edges. It's beginning to wear it up now. The C-46 is becoming familiar. But here is something important. The shape of a C-46, like the shape of many other planes, will change as the perspective changes. That is especially true of the wing. When the plane is coming toward us, here is what it looks like. The wing seems to be swept forward. Let's remember that. Now let's study the plane here. The wing is tapered back on the leading edge, but it's almost straight on the trailing edge. See the difference? Now let the plane move away from us. Look at the wing. The dihedral has changed its shape again. Now it's completely swept back. The wing has three shapes. Swept forward, tapered back on one edge, swept back. That's why you can't rely on one feature. You've got to learn a plane as a single shape. But if there is any one feature in the C-46, it's that fat, sleek, streamlined fuselage without a step up for the pilot's compartment. That's important. From here, let's work out the finer points. That big fin and rudder is fared into the top of the fuselage and the wide tailplane is set low at the bottom of the fuselage. But what really hits you is still the fuselage itself. Fat, curved, bulbous, streamlined. Let your eye run over these features quickly as the plane shifts before you. Fuselage, fin and rudder, tailplane. Let's look at them without stopping the plane. There's the low-set tail plane, and the fin and rudder fared, and the unmistakable fat, bulging fuselage, the streamlined belly of the biggest twin-engine transport in the world. That fuselage, that tail with its big fin and rudder, will appear over and over again. Try to see them now as part of a general shape. It's the shape of a heavy transport, built to carry great loads over great distances, the C-46 the Curtis Commando. Just once more, let's have it turn back. Let it fly for us in every possible direction. And as it flies, we'll let it settle in our minds. It's like the face of a new friend, slowly becoming familiar, slowly becoming clear, 
easy to distinguish at any distance. Time is almost up. The transport must go on its way. But we know it now. We can point out the main features. The fat, streamlined fuselage, and bared into the fuselage, the big fin and rudder. And set low on the fuselage, the wide tailplane. And the shape of the wing, changing as the angle changes. All these features blend together now into one shape, one plane. Down below, the Chinese soldier is still at his post on the mountainside. The guns for China are on their way again. The C-46, the Curtis Commando, is on its way through the cold mist across the mountains of the world.